Princess Marta Louise, ensnared? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We turn to a different corner of the world, Norway. Home of Brunost, Brunards, and, in the far north, days of endless sun and, in the winter, days of endless night. The most successful nation in the Winter Olympics, and of some 66,000 miles of rugged coastline, which is seen as some of the most beautiful in the world. You may be aware that there has been recent reports about the removal of Princess Marta Louise, who is now described as a former member of the Norwegian royal family. This is as a consequence of her controversial relationship with a gentleman called Durek Veret. More about him in due course. Let's have a little look at the history of Princess Marta Louise to understand a little bit about her and whether she is susceptible to being ensnared. Uh, Princess Marta Louise of Norway is a former member of the Norwegian royal family, a businesswoman, and a self-described clairvoyant. She's the only daughter of King Harald V and Queen Sonja, and is fourth in line of succession to the Norwegian throne after her younger brother Haakon and his children, but isn't a member of the royal house. She's an active private businesswoman and alternative therapist, but doesn't carry out any official engagements on behalf of the royal house. From 2007 to 2018, she led her own alternative therapy centre, commonly known in Norway as the Angel School, Engelskollen, which provided training in clairvoyance and communication with angels and communication with the dead. She was married to the late writer and visual artist Ari Ben from 2002 to 2017. He committed suicide. She has three children with him. In May 2019, she publicly announced her romantic relationship and professional collaboration with Durek Veret, a conspiracy theorist and self-described shaman who has served time in prison. More about him in due course. Now, Princess Marta Louise might be said to have some slightly out-there views with regard to alternative therapy and communication with the dead. But it's evident from his behaviours and a reading of what she has done in the past uh, that she exhibits emotional empathy. In order not to make this video too lengthy, I'm not going to go through all the instances that, that demonstrate this. It is the case that some empaths will have this belief in communication with the dead, that this belief of embracing alternative therapies because they have an alternative perspective to mainstream medicine. The fact of being a self-proclaimed clairvoyance, she has those views. And of course, whilst many people may pour scorn on them, although she does have quite a lot of supporters, the fact is that many people would look at it with a degree of cynicism. But this is also part of her empathy and her status as an empath. Of course, not all empaths believe that they can communicate with the dead or that they have powers of clairvoyancy. But certain do, particularly those that are linked to the contagion aspect. That is one of the schools of emotional empath, uh, which includes standard, which is the majority of empaths, super, codependent, and also contagion. You can learn more about that in a forthcoming series about empaths, and also if you were to undertake the empath detector yourself, as the materials that tell you what you are go into greater detail about the various schools and also cadres of empath. But she's an individual that has exhibited emotional empathy in the past with regard to her activities in terms of 
showing responsibility. For instance, she started paying income tax, showed accountability. She was engaged in various acts and actions where she fundraised, that she was involved in advocating help for people. Albeit because she advocates this help in a more spiritual sense, of course, to some extent, that will attract criticism. But it is also a manifestation of her emotional empathy. Thus, as an empath, we know that she has an addiction to narcissists and therefore a susceptibility to an individual that would come along and exploit her emotional empathy in a way to ensnare her. As mentioned, she was married to Ari Ben, who died by suicide on Christmas Day in 2019. And as a consequence of that, she then moved on and became involved fairly quickly following the death of her former husband with Durek Verret. Now, their initial involvement was as a professional basis because she invited him to become involved in a tour that she was doing, which was called The Princess and the Shaman. But let's find out more about what has actually been going on in relation to who this individual is. Derek Verrett is an American businessman, an alternative therapist, a conspiracy theorist, a self-professed shaman, an author. He advocates several conspiracy theories and has been characterized by Norwegian media and other critics as a con man. He is now engaged to Princess Marta Louise. Now, with conspiracy theories, that is an indicator of the narcissist. Why? Well, not because anybody who believes in a conspiracy theory is automatically a narcissist. That's not the case. It is, as I say, an indicator. But the reason is this. As you know from my work, one of the fundamental things that you know about the narcissist is the need for control. And the narcissist can deal with threats to control either directly, indirectly, or from a position of withdrawal. Now, if you're a narcissist and you feel, for instance, that the country that you're in is threatening your sense of control, your own government, what are you able to do about it? Well, it's unlikely that you've got a private army that could cause an insurgency. It's unlikely that you've got the billions of pounds or dollars or euros, whatever it might be, in order to embark upon a media campaign to highlight your concerns about the behaviours of the government linked to the conspiracy theory. Accordingly, you can't really assert control directly against your government. So what can you do? Well... You can, of course, generate your own theory about what they're up to, which becomes labelled as a conspiracy theory, as it's based upon the deluded mind of that particular narcissist, and that's a means of a certain control indirectly. So, for instance, let us take the suggestion that often occurred that the attack on September the 11th on the, on the Twin Towers was a conspiracy theory. Whether you believe that or not is not the place to debate that here, but I'm using it by way of example. Let us say that you saw that as an attack by, and you're American, you saw that as an attack by your own government to justify invading Afghanistan and taking the war to Iraq. In such instances, you're not going to be able to do anything directly against your own government, but by generating a theory that actually it was the government that did this that you then put that on the internet and find like-minded people who similarly utilize it as a means for indirect assertion of control, that conspiracy theory then starts to get legs. And it's often the case, although not always, but often the case that conspiracy theories are generated by narcissists as their means of asserting control. I have explained in the past this and that it is my intention to do a separate video about the involvement of narcissists in conspiracy theories, and that will be done. But the fact that Vured has advocated several conspiracy theories provides us with an indicator. He grew up 
in the San Francisco Bay Area town of Foster City in California and changed his name in 2014. He claims to be a sixth generation shaman, which shaman rather, which of course is uh, grandiosity. It might also demonstrate some form of delusion. He has been convicted and sentenced to five years' imprisonment in the United States after he'd organised a party in an abandoned house that was set on fire. He said that he served one year in prison before being released. Criminality shows a sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability, and an absence of emotional empathy for those affected by behaviour, and is another indicator. He was formerly married to Zanita Marcelkova, a Los Angeles resident of Czech nationality. They married in 2005 when she was 21 years old. In 2008, he reported his then-wife to the immigration authorities as an illegal resident. She demonstrates a lack of emotional empathy for her, and as a result, she was jailed and deported from the country. It would also appear that that was a form of assertion of control over her. They divorced in 2009, and Veritas claimed that his wife exploited him. That may well be an indicator of victim mentality. From 2007 to 2015, Verrett also had a boyfriend, a masseur named Hank Greenberg, who was also his business partner. Sexual fluidity, as demonstrated here, is also another narcissistic indicator. I make it very clear that if somebody's bisexual, that does not mean they are a narcissist, but narcissists are commonly fluid with regard to sexuality, because sex is just a means of getting to the prime aims, and therefore... Some narcissists will sleep with both men and women because, in effect, it's anything to keep the party going. He broke off the engagement prior to the planned wedding in 2015. Greenberg later accused Ferret of being manipulative, violent, violent and dangerous and said he has a brainwashed cult of followers where his world is law. Again, a cult of followers is indicative of the behaviour of a narcissist and those allegations, if they're correct, of him being manipulative, violent and dangerous are further narcissistic indicators. Verrett lived for six years with his then-manager, Tiana Griego, who said that Durek controlled my whole life. It was as if he became jealous of anything that stole his attention. I was not allowed to start a serious romantic relationship or raise my son. It was all about Durek. Further narcissist indicators there. Verrett had a limited early career as a model, and in appearances on television shows, Vanity Fair wrote about Verrett being bisexual and summed his early activities up as an eclectic early career, and this helped propel his brand of New Age shamanism into celebrity circles, as he'd grown up partly in that world. Verrett claims to demystify spirituality by making it attainable and understandable for not only the layman, but also for the more spiritually advanced and everyone in between. Verrett states that his true mission is to bring the ancient practice of shamanism to the mainstream, helping people to get lit by cultivating love and acceptance of themselves and others. Verrett claims to have been initiated spiritually by one of his grandmothers, who, according to fact-checking site Van Thru, died before he was born. Therefore, it would appear that he's telling a lie and there's a revision of history. And an American woman who calls herself Princess Susanna von Radic of Croatia who is described by fact-checking site Vantru as a fraud who claims to be a princess. Verrett claims to have worked at Shamir Medical Center in Israel, where he says he treated children for cancer using shamanistic methods. More of that later. But the hospital denied that he'd ever worked there. Lie, revision of history. Verrett also claims to be a reincarnated pharaoh from Egypt. Delusion. In, his 29, in 2019, his book Spirit Hacking was set to be published in Norway, but the major publisher, Kapelen Dam, dropped the book a week prior to its scheduled publication over concerns over its content. It was later published by a small publisher. In the book, Verrett advocates numerous absurd medical theories, delusion. He claims children get cancer because they want it, absence of emotional empathy, manipulative behaviour by triangulation, absence of accountability, sense of entitlement, and suggests that chemotherapy doesn't work and is only given to cancer patients because the doctors make money from it. Smearing. Now, of course, it is widely held that in some instances, 
uh, big pharma, of course, influences the prescriptions that doctors provide, and that there is something of a racket that goes on within the pharmaceutical industry. But the fact is, to claim that chemotherapy doesn't work is ridiculous, because the actual scientific evidence demonstrates that it does. He also wrote that casual sex attracts subterranean spirits, delusion, that make an impression on the inside of women's vaginas, which he sells exercises to clean out. No wonder he's friends with Gwyneth Paltrow with this kind of nonsense. Verrett says, also says that he can turn atoms and literally reduce age. Magical thinking, delusion. Cancer experts call Verrett's views on cancer dangerous. Major newspaper, Dark Blader, described the book as the ravings of a lunatic. Verdon's gang called the book nonsense, garbage and dirty talk and said it is an unoriginal rehash of the standard repertoire of the most cynical part of the alternative New Age culture. In the book, Verrett also asserts that he was resurrected as a 27-year-old delusion. He also claimed that he foresaw the September 11th attacks two years before they happened, but said that everyone must accept their destiny, and that it was not only his role to intervene. How convenient. I think most people, if they've seen it, they would have said something about it. But of course, this is the revision of history, delusion, and a lie. Verrett has stated that he considers himself to be a reptilian delusion and has asserted that I'm a hybrid species of reptilian and Andromeda and I also hold the energies of the ancient spirits from the old world. There have been lies told about our species that I want to address. We are a cluster of beings. That means we've come here to create structures that help people to come into liberation. Reptilians are here to shake up the system in a big way. Delusion, grandiosity. According to extremism researcher John Fairseth, Verrett's ideas about being a reptilian are based on the reptilian conspiracy theory advocated by David Icke, character trait acquisition. Verrett has also stated that he considers the 5G technology to be a conspiracy by those who enslave the planet. Paranoia. In July 2022, Verrett was criticised in Norway for advertising a medallion he sells and that he claims cures COVID-19. Grandiosity. Lie. Delusion. The Norwegian consumer ombudsman said undocumented claims that products can cure diseases violate Norwegian law. Sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, criminality. His relationship with Princess Marta Louise of Norway has been heavily scrutinised, with many Norwegians voicing their disapproval and calling Verrett a charlatan. He has also been characterised by Norwegian media and other critics as a con man and a conspiracy theorist and his statements on various topics have been widely criticised and ridiculed in Norway. The former Prime Minister of Norway, Erna Solberg, described Verrett's views as very strange and not based on facts, and said that the ideas that he promotes is something that we combat as conspiracy theories. Solberg further said the criticism of Verrett is reasonable. Secretary of Health Ola Henrik Kraut Björkholt described Durek Verrett as an unscrupulous and dangerous charlatan who engages in fraud. Together, Martha Louise, Martha Louise and Verrett have organized seminars titled The Princess and the Shaman, which were widely criticized for the claims made by Verrett about healing cancer and for exploiting Martha Louise's constitutional role as princess for a private business venture sense of entitlement, lack of emotional empathy. In June 2022, Marta Louise announced that she and Verrett were engaged. Verrett has claimed that his mother had foreseen when he was still a child that he would marry a Norwegian princess. Delusion, grandiosity, magical thinking. Both Verrett and Marta Louise have complained about the negative reception of Verrett in Norway, and Verrett claimed he was criticised because people don't want a black man in the royal family. Now, actually, the response of King Harold and... Crown Prince Hawken to his involvement was to welcome him. And this is a cry from somebody which sounds very familiar to somebody else that we know a lot about, doesn't it? Victimhood playing the race card. Verrett also claimed that I have never experienced so much racism as when I came to Norway and said that he is misunderstood. Of course, that's a lack of accountability for his behaviours, rather than realising these controversial views are likely to wind people up, rather than realise it's his behaviour that's drawing criticism, he goes down the road well travelled by Harry's wife of claiming you're all racists. 
comparing himself to geniuses like Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, and Helen Keller. Grandiosity, delusion, magical thinking. His claims of criticism, his claims of racism, were criticised. Former cabinet minister Abid Raja of Pakistani descent accused Verit of playing the race card to distract from the criticism of his conspiracy theories and dangerous views. Deflection, and comedian Jonas Dorma of African American descent said that Verit's claims undermine the real fight against racism, and that people in Norway react negatively to Verit because he is a con man who says horrible things. Again, it's about his behaviour. Verrett has claimed that he will become the first black person who becomes part of a European royal family. Well, somebody else did, didn't they? In October 2022, Crown Prince Haakon of Norway, Marta Louise's brother, told Norwegian broadcaster NRK that the matter of Verrett's position in their family is difficult and will take time to solve. So, plenty of material there that shows lots of narcissistic indicators about this extremely deluded individual who adopts a victim mentality and has no accountability for his behaviours. There's plenty more about him, but that gives you a very clear flavour of what he is about and that demonstrates, of course, that he quite clearly is a narcissist. The New York Times has picked up on the uh, story with regard to what has gone on and explains Norwegian princess engaged to a shaman gives up her royal duties. An article by Emma Babola and Henrik Prisa Lebel tells us in recent decades, royals around the world have relinquished their official roles because of scandals and family feuds, or to marry commoners or divorcees. This week, a Norwegian princess quit her royal duties over her love for a modern-day shaman. Princess Marta Louise, the 51-year-old daughter of King Harald and Queen Sonja of Norway, got engaged in June to Durek Verret, an American celebrity shaman and the inventor of the Spirit Optimizer, a healing amulet that he sells on his website for $222. Since their engagement, the Norwegian news media and the public have kept a spotlight on Mr. Verrett, criticising him for saying he used the amulet to fight the coronavirus, delusion, for having suggested that cancer was a choice, lack of emotional empathy, and for having said that he was a hybrid species of reptilian. Every time a person in the royal family gets engaged, it creates media storms, Marta Louise said in a cheerful Instagram video this week, so also this time. After the recent media discussions, she added she, Mr. Verrett, and the royal family made some adjustments, including her dropping her official roles. Quite simply, King Harold isn't going to stand for this shit. From now on, the princess and Mr. Verrett are seeking to distinguish more clearly between their activities and the royal house of Norway, Sound like anybody else we've heard from in the past? The royal family said in a statement, in which they thanked her for performing her duties with warmth, care, and deep commitment, underpinning her emotional empathy. Marta Louise will keep her title, but the couple will not indicate an association with the Royal House of Norway in their social media channels. Marta Louise said the decision was amicable, and King Harold said in a television interview that he and Mr. Verrett agree to disagree. It's rather polite of the king. Marta Louise's interest in alternative treatments and her claims of clairvoyance long predate her relationship with Mr. Verrett. But what it does demonstrate is that this is something that he can exploit. Narcissist that he clearly is. And you only have to look at the pictures that appear during this video. You can see the dead eyes and the narcissist stare that this is an individual who has taken advantage of the emotional empathy of Princess Marta Louise and her views about spirituality and communication with horses and other animals, etc., and talking to angels. She's susceptible, and his cynical narcissism has come along and exploited it. Her affinity for the supernatural has raised eyebrows in Norway for more than a decade. According to a 2012 poll, while 15% of the Norwegian population believed that Princess Marta Louise communicated with angels and dead people, 47% thought that her practices had a negative effect on the royal family. Her least popular ability, according to polls, was making contact with the dead, which she claimed in media interviews around 2010 that she could do. 
One of Norway's most famous clairvoyants at the time, the Snazer Man, told the Norwegian ver- newspaper Verger that it was not possible to talk to the dead, and the bishop of the Bjorgvin diocese in western Norway at the time called some of her medium activities highly objectionable. Another bishop said that there was a line between talking to the angels and talking to the dead, and warned that the princess should not cross it. But with a fascination with ghosts and spirits surging in the country, she has had some supporters among healers and life coaches. Even her mother, the queen, publicly defended her abilities, comparing her to witches who were burned at the stake because they thought the earth was round. But the criticism that followed Marta Louise's engagement to Mr. Verrett was apparently too much for the couple and the royal family. The couple met in Los Angeles in 2018, where Mr. Verrett was living. Marta Louise's manager, Karina Scheel, said in a text message, In America, the shaman had a conspicuous following and celebrity clients and friends, including Gwyneth Paltrow, that he called My Family, seeing there was an extension of self, another narcissistic indicator. In 2019, the princess invited Mr. Verrett to, jo- to Norway to join her in a tour called The Princess and the Shaman. But in Norway, the shaman was condemned for spreading unscientific beliefs, accusations that the couple largely rejected as a form of racism against Mr. Verrett, lack of accountability, playing the victim. In an Instagram post from before the engagement in which Mr. Verrett defined himself as a hybrid species of reptilian Andromeda who came to shake up the system was deleted, but the leading Norwegian newspaper published screenshots of it, which demonstrates that he was probably attempting to manipulate what he had said, but has been caught out by his own evidence. When he got COVID, he said in an Instagram video, he searched for a reason and found that it was a, he was a workaholic, constantly there for people and giving, giving, giving. False empath, grandiosity, delusion. He said he realized that he needed to take time to do his breathe work and listen to the ancestors and that he had used his white light bringer amulet to get the poisons out of my system. Triangulation with object, delusion. The Norwegian newspaper Netavisen commissioned scientists in Oslo to examine Mr. Verrett's amulets and Sver M. Selbach, a professor who analysed the results, said they consisted mainly of plastic, with only one die separating the light bringer and the ancient truth. <laughs> Ingeborg Seneset, a Norwegian journalist, called the amulets petty sh- pretty shams in a Facebook post and said the princess's name should not be used in commercial collaboration with someone who promotes unscientific notions. Of course, he uses her title for character trait acquisition. In the Instagram video in which Marta Louise officially announced her resignation, she said she would stop her patronage of various organisations and made clear that she believed in scientifically proven health care. But acupuncture, yoga, meditation crystals could also help, she said. Gives you more of a flavour as to why he has been able to ensnare her, that she has the addiction to narcissists, that as a consequence of her beliefs, his narcissism has come along and cynically exploited that, using it against her, and that there are repeated instances of his behaviour which demonstrate that this man is quite clearly a narcissist. Accordingly, she has been ensnared. She, of course, believes that he is a decent person, unable to see beyond what he is, and, of course, has fallen for the poison that he pours and the victimhood that he demonstrates, similar to that of Harry's wife, by saying, the criticisms of me are racist. No. If one examines the evidence, it demonstrates the criticisms of him, which have come from a multiplicity of different places, are as a consequence of his own behaviour. And of course, all of this is demonstrative, and you can see, as I've mentioned, the way that he looks in the pictures, the narcissistic stare, and that the fact is, the dead eyes are prevalent. He, of course, claimed that he confronted racism, But Royal Central recently reported that Haakon, the Crown Prince of Norway, had confirmed that there were ongoing debates regarding his sister's title in a matter that was reported back in late October of this year. This is a topic I find difficult, the Crown Prince Haakon told the press. He mentions having met Verrett on many occasions and wanting him to feel welcome in our family. 
However, he likewise feels very responsible for the institution, citing controversial things that have been said and done that cause quite a bit of discussion. Verrett, of course, wrote, White people write all this hate and death threats to us and all this stuff for being together because they don't want to see a black man in the royal family, he said in a video posted to Instagram on June the 9th. Smearing victim mentality. Recent reports from Norwegian press outlet Dagbladet stated that the people are turning their backs on Marta Louise. This can be attributed to the population's distrust in Verrett's statements. They're also questioning why Marta Louise isn't doing or saying anything about it. In August of this year, King Harold spoke about his future son-in-law addressing one of his controversial statements for the first time per Royal Central. Verrett had recently claimed that he'd recovered from COVID-19 with the help of a medallion. In turn, King Harold stressed the country's excellent health system, which he said Verrett has benefited from. Finally, he said, it is the culture collision we are now noticing, adding that they are now in talks with Verrett, as families do, while he learns the royal ropes. The Norwegian king added that while he believes that things will work out, there are no promises that will be resolved tomorrow. And, of course, it demonstrates, again, an open-minded approach by King Harold whilst looking to protect the institution that he is part of. What is clear, however, from the evidence that is presented, and there's plenty more that I haven't mentioned here, that Mr. Durek Verrett is a narcissist, and that his narcissism has caused him to ensnare Princess Marta Louise, that her emotional empathy has been used against her, that her beliefs, which some may find a little bit strange, but nevertheless, he has capitalized on them, his narcissism using them by way of mirroring and exploitation of them in pursuit of the prime aims. His views exhibit magical thinking, delusion, a lack of accountability. His behaviors support that also. And it's very clear that he is a narcissist and he has ensnared Princess Marta Louise of Norway. Let me know what you think in the comments. I do have a sizable following of people from Norway, and I'd be interested, as always, in your excellent English to learn more of what you have to say. As I know, with many Norwegians, du snakker engels veldig bra. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.